Uh, well, uh, my name is Joachim Max and I'm working as a transport planner at Sueco. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit. Let's see how this works. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about a project that I've been working with, uh, and it's actually a planning project of a new eco city in a new city called Sao Fejian, which uh, lies in the eastern part of China. So here's some illustrations from the uh, for how the new set will, will look. Uh, so a bit of background information uh, about the urbanization of China which is very, uh, very extremely uh, and uh, to the, within 25 years the share of population in the cities will go from 45% to 65%, uh, and uh, which means that the citizens living in the city will uh, increase from 500 million to about 1,000 million uh, within these 25 years. Uh, every new year, 15 million new citizens, which is basically about 40,000 new inhabitants every day, which if you uh, compared to uh, existing cities in Sweden and you in shopping every day as moving to the city so we're talking about very large numbers uh, 2,000 square kilometers of building space every year are built in China and uh, China has more now more than 120 cities with one over 1 million residents uh, it's a map of China, and uh, what we can see in this one the, is the, the density and uh, in the eastern part of China, uh, over 75% are living in the city, and, and the western parts are very much lower. And uh, so the, between 2001 and 2007, the, the, there was a big increase in, in the uh, from 41 to 118 million cities. Uh, this of course has a major impact on the environment, uh, lack of water resources, as well as uh, the waste problem, the growing piles of waste in the cities, as well as uh, problems related to transport issues due to, due to an increase in car usage. And uh, as it looks today, this will lead to a very uh, big dependence in fossil fuels and uh, some of the environmental effects related to traffic uh, in China. 16 of the worst 20 most polluted area city cities are in China and 90% of air pollution comes from road traffic uh, and between 2004 and 2007 there was a doubling of private owned cars uh, and the same about the same time there was a reduction of the number of bicycles, 26%. And China had 2009 the biggest, world's greatest car market with 13.6 million cars. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the, the Symbio City concept uh, which we used in this project. Is uh, a project, uh, a concept that, that's developed in in Sweden, and uh, uh, it's actually a platform for describing our system solutions, methods, and tools uh, when exporting our knowledge in uh, spatial planning and environmental engineering. Uh, and the main message is the integrated approach, uh, both integrated planning, uh, engineering, and organization. So in this project, we we, uh, we had all different disciplines that put, were working together, and we saw a lot of synergies and common interests between the uh, brought this project to a very huge success. Uh, in Sweco, we've been doing some. International sustainability project. Uh, the last couple of last ten years, uh, sustainability reviews, and uh, 
some transformation of new cities, a lot of cities, existing cities and towns, as well as planning new cities. Uh, and when it comes to, to planning new cities, uh, uh, most of the uh, China has uh, actually offers uh, does offer that uh, possibility for for us planners. So. And uh, the city, our assignment here, uh, this has a map for, for uh, so we know where, where the city lies. It's uh, South Fijian, it's in the eastern part of China, 200 kilometers east of Beijing. And uh, it's uh, in a strategic development area of Beijing and Tanjin. And the city is built in the sea, actually, uh, on land, on filled land, in order to, to uh, save agricultural land. Uh, and there's also, uh, also planned for a dike, as you can see in the, the illustration there. And it's, basically to, to uh, protect the city from storms, uh, flooding, rising sea levels due to climate change. Uh, and the project is based on the agreements between Sweden and China in 2008 and uh, to create interaction when it comes to planning, building and operation. And uh, here's our the Sweco vision for the project. Uh, our work is to support the city vision in becoming world famous, modern, attractive, climate neutral, sustainable city with people in focus. That's our project leader, Ulf Ronhagen, uh, professor in uh, sustainability uh, planning in uh, uh, KTH. And I'm going to describe the, the our, this, the assignment we, that we, we've been working with, it's uh, four, actually four planning tasks. Uh, and the first task was to develop a sustainability program for including guidelines for, for 30 square kilometers of the city. And then we, we made strategic plans for the first phase of the, the city, 30 square kilometers, and conceptual planning for six square kilometers. So, 30 square kilometers is uh, about the same, same size as Malmö, so we're talking about quite large areas here. Uh, and then we made a conceptual design for a sustainability center. Uh, I will get back to a little bit about that later. And also task four was to do conceptual detail planning for 12, 12 square kilometers, which is about the same size as uh, so the Malum, the, the Stockholm, and what we used for the for the planning was uh, to to have these nine planning themes. Uh, I will not go into uh, any one of them except for the accessible city, which is my area. Livable city, innovative city, uh, accessible city, green and blue city, climate neutral city resource efficient city, flexible city, beautiful city, and healthy city. And when it comes to the accessible city, uh, the node is a very fundamental feature for the city. Uh, the map you can see here is uh, actually for 30 square kilometers, the, the city, the first part, and it's planned to expand. Uh, uh, so the nodes, uh, and they are connected by a proposed BRT line, bus rapid transit line, uh, which in the future could be expanded to uh, light rail, uh, combinate, co combinations. Uh, we also have road network, primary roads, for getting access to the nodes via uh, so that the cars can be parked at the, the parking facilities within the node. 
and that way we create uh, car-free zones in, in between the nodes. We also have a monorail, suggested monorail solution. Uh, I'll mention a little bit about that later. And also a possible regional train for giving good access between city and surrounding areas. Uh, what I mean, didn't mention was that we have this, this city uh, and uh, there's actually a very gigantic industry zone west of the city with, and uh, mainly steel production and uh, this city is seen as a resource for that industry areas. So it would be a communicating sources. We've give, given every, all of the nodes different, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, different trademarks. Uh, and the node, uh, we uh, see the node as a, uh, with the node as a mobility management center, as we call it, and uh, then we have. We have the bike center for uh, getting your bikes fix fixed, and you have also uh, bike parking, bike maintenance. Uh, also, the, the possible to interchange to between BRT and uh, car or uh, light rail or even regional trains. We also have this. Uh, Type for order shopping, where you can walk into warehouses uh, and, and uh, order stuff, and then you get the delivery right at the door from warehouses outside the city in order to, to reduce the car traffic in the hidden center. Also, carpools, as well as car parks. Here's a, a bit of illustration for the car free zones within the node center with light rails and uh, buses. Uh, and what we use for the uh, for the first task of this planning assignment was to, to set up some goals, uh, indicators for traffic and transportation when it comes to accessibility, safety, uh, and the walking to walking distance to bus station should be more than 300 meters. And walking distance to urban nodes shouldn't be more than 800 meters. Share of travel by motorized cars, less than 10%. And share of travel by foot and bicycle, more than 50%. So that's basically what's, uh, what we're prioritizing in this city. Uh, I'm going to show you this uh, hierarchy of, of uh, how it basically look like in a lot of modern cities uh, what we're planning for and uh, that's we, we prioritize the single occupancy vehicles uh, and uh, in, the, in the bottom we, we, we prioritize pedestrians and bicycles and what we aim to do in this planning project is to, to uh, turn it around so that we uh, be very much priority to pedestrians and bicycles and, and uh, not very much to the single occupancy vehicles. And uh, a bit of a short summary for the, all the transport modes and how they uh, how, how we plan to, to, uh, to integrate them in, within the city. Pedestrians are given full accessibility to most parts of the city and the past exclusively for pedestrians in the central areas, as well as uh, accessibility for elderly and disabled crossings. And the bicycles are, giving, are given a wide, comfortable and bi safe bicycle network, as well as, I mentioned earlier, bicycle parking within the nodes. And uh, bus rapid transit, street level, flexible, uh, bus running the sole lane and uh, connects to to the nodes in the city, 
uh, and it runs on biogas produced in the resource management center, which is in the northern part of the city. And light rail, adequate for high dense traveling, street, also street level, mm. contributes to the more modern urban design of the city. Other, pro other proposed modes of public transport in the city are a monorail system for connecting the green features and uh, projects within the city. Uh, and it uh, has a very important symbolic value to, to uh, make it a, uh, possible to, for, for the tourists. And uh, also because this is a demonstration city, it's very important to, for tourists to, to uh, be able to go around the monorail line and see all these innovative solutions that we plan for. Also, ferry transport, uh, primary work to complement other modes of transport. High capacity regional and commuter trains, and also we have planned for a public rap rapid transit uh, system in the campus university area in the north. Innovative solution for uh, demonstration. Uh, the private car is uh, giving high accessibility, uh, however speed and traffic performance will not be prioritized. Uh, cargo and distribution modes. Uh, high transport should, if possible, be handled by boat or train and uh, distributing terminals located outside the city. We also seen it's very important to do uh, about the branding and marketing of the of public trans transport system in order to be recognized by uh, a distinct and uniform identity, as well as institutional structures to deal with operations uh, aspects of the public transport system, uh, as well as uh, establishing authorities for managing and planning. Uh, I'm going to tell you about a little bit of the status of the projects. Uh, these are actually uh, images that I received just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so I don't know if I mentioned it started all out in the, in, uh, in the spring of 2008. So it's been going quite, quite faster actually. Uh, new land has been developed in this in the sea. So uh, this is basically a picture of how it looks. It's got a land field. And the inner protection dike is completed. And uh, new canals connecting two rivers. As well as, uh, as, well as a basic network for, for the roads here. And the first housing, mixed use area for 1,000 apartments. And also some more housing here. administration area and this sustainability center that uh, I mentioned earlier is uh, was part of the planning uh, work as well the conceptual design and uh, we have some delegates we had some delegates over from China and uh, uh, we uh, went to the Hambi Sjöstad and the Bonalet, uh, some Swedish reference cities or city parks uh, and this, this sustainability center is actually a lot of based in the, the Glasshus Ett in Hambi, Hambi Sjöstad, Hambi. And, uh, but China wanted it bigger so this is actually uh, scaled up 100 times compared to the, the Glasshus Ett. So the volumes are a bit bigger in China. Some final con conclusions from the, from the work. Uh, increased car usage and urban sprawl is a crucial issue for mankind. 
because of the increase of car users and uh, uh, we're still uh, the energy is mainly based on coal as it looks today so it's a very big effect on the, uh, effect on the environment New attitudes and lifestyles that can increase the status for public transport and bicycle has to be promoted. Still today, a uh, very large number of the, of the <coughs> people in China are using bicycles, but uh, more and more are getting buying cars. So we have to get back to the uh, try to get back to uh, the structure where, where we are uh, prioritizing. Bicycles and pedestrians. Planning new cities open up a window of opportunities to actualize sustainability, sustainable transports. It's a very huge potential. As you can see, in these numbers we're getting so many new inhabitants in the city every year. So, if we can get uh, the effect, uh, it's a very good potential. Also, a very great potential export of knowledge about the integrated transport and spatial planning, as well as uh, uh, this needed a continued collabor collaboration to be able to build an institu institutional capacity and also to educate. Thank you for listening. <coughs>